here, buddy. We're doing it! We're doing it! Hey guys, welcome back. At United Airlines, we have reserve for pilots and one of the reserve schedules is called a field standby where you sit at the airport for a four hour stretch for emergency type pop-up trips and stuff like that. I did one this morning up at O'Hare and while I was sitting there just killing time for those four hours, I was answering a few emails and one of them came up was a question about my POH or my pilot operating handbook. And so I thought I'd do a little quick video on my pilot operating handbook. So let's take a look at it. All right, guys, I did this uh, all on pages on my MacBook. So we're a Mac, Apple family, MacBooks, MacBook Pro, and a regular Mac in our office. So I did it through pages and I could save it as a Word document or a PDF. But I started out with, um, over the last five years, or I guess about the last five years of my build, I uh, was looking for POHs or flight manuals from several, several different builders that would be willing to share. Some of them are online, so I took a look at those and decided kind of how I wanted to do mine. But you can see, uh, you know, I took uh, just from uh, my planning purposes for doing the paint, I took that little screen grab of that, my manual, my serial number, my tail number, and uh, some other information. And uh, it starts off with a flight manual index. I did this very similar to what we have at uh, the airlines and kind of how things got broken down. Um, and in this way, you can always add and change this as you add or need to do changes. And I'll have a record revision. Uh, here, revision number down at the bottom, 21-1, uh, and so I did that the year, and then I started uh, with a decimal point going into it. So I had several revisions I worked on, but, um, you know, it breaks down into dimensions, the flight controls limitation section, the instrument markings and placards, emergency procedures, uh, down into normal procedures, and then finishing up in... Um, the uh, electrical and then weight and balance. Um, so forward, disclaimer, that's an amateur built aircraft, um, abbreviation, some definitions here. And this is pretty standard for a lot of POHs or flight manuals. And so I added and changed and did a few different things on mine. Uh, and then there's a record revision. So I started out with the first document, printed it, cut it. And then um, in 2019 is when I first started working on it. Uh, actually, the first revision was in 2019. I think I'd been working on this sometime in 2018. Um, uh, the actual movements of the flight controls, and these are just relative to my own uh, application here. Um, if I made some changes to how I did my engine startup based off of uh, what actually felt comfortable, what worked better, and then any typos I may have found, and so on and so forth. So when I added uh, different things or changed a uh, photo, updated weight and balance after paint, so stuff like that. And then there's the three dimensions uh, of the aircraft, the flight controls, all the limitations, and these are all out of vans, aircraft, uh, oil limitations, and engine fuel, oil, power plant. This is all based off my particular engine, uh, the IO375 M1S out of Aerosport. And then speeds, um, some of these are out of vans directly. Um, and then the stall speeds, I just made sure that they were exact when I did my phase one testing, and they were. And then eventually I'll get into aerobatic maneuvers and I'll put the maneuver as well as the entry speeds in there, but I'll have to put it back into phase one for a short period of time until uh, I get those tested out. It's red placking, uh, placards and stuff. For those of you that aren't familiar with uh, glass panels, which 
it's going to be more popular and more commonplace, but you have different tapes versus dials. So there's uh, the white tape for uh, your operating range and so on and so forth. So each one of these markings is based off of my testing of the aircraft. Uh, oil uh, in the different gauges here, oil gauge, fuel gauge, uh, the tack, the cylinder head temperatures, the fuel, oil quantity. And then the different placards I have in the aircraft inside it. And then emergency procedures. And I designed this very similar to what we have uh, in the 737 and Lear 45 as well. Um, uh, so engine failure, engine failure after takeoff, engine failure in flight, force landing, ditching, alternator failure, engine uh, fire in flight, engine fire in ground, uh, cockpit fire, clogged air filter, stuff like that. And then this next is amplified uh, emergency procedures or expanded emergency procedures. And I put it basically in layman's terms, what each thing uh, is going to be happening uh, for each one of those versus just a checklist item. And I left extra space in the back, um, no noting it that's uh, intentionally left blank. And then uh, normal procedures, the normal checklist, pre-flight, uh, exterior pre-flight, uh, before start, engine start, taxi, engine run-up, uh, pre-takeoff, takeoff, cruise, uh, climb, cruise, and descent, approach, go around, after landing, engine shutdown, and parking. And then electrical, for me, you know, I listed all the electrical equipment I have, the big items. Circuit breaker values, uh, in my case, are all off the, um, the VPX uh, system, so the solid state. Uh, from vertical power and then this would be vertical powers diagram into what each circuit breaker and input switches are And then I took a picture of my panel and this was one of the updates because I added the UAVionics AV30 right here and I labeled each one of them and uh, Then a description of each one of them So anybody could jump in the airplane look at this and know what each switch is going to be doing although they're pretty self-explanatory but And then the weight and balance uh, that you do um all the measurements here and then I did all the weights based off of uh, when I weighed the aircraft before and then eventually updated these afterwards for um, the paint so this would be the normal uh, weight and balance uh, form this would be the aerobatic weight and balance form there and that's into my my POH so I have that in uh, it's in pages version I have it in Word document so that it can be manipulated as well as a PDF. And then um, I can show you how I have it uh, looking at the end. All right, guys, and here's my uh, final product. This is what it looks like here. It's uh, about six inches by nine inches is the dimension of the uh, laminate sheets. I got those off of Amazon um, pre-cut, so it's the size, the piece of paper. I have a template on my vinyl cutter that I can actually cut paper. So I make the template, I print the pieces of paper front and back, and then I use my vinyl cutter to cut it out, and you can see the rounded edges there. So a little more than you really need to do, but I had the time to do it during COVID, so I did. Two hole punch, I, the hole punch, uh, I, you know, it's for a full sheet, but I can slide the holes together. So I did it measurement, so I punch it, get these two, flip the sheet over, and I get these two punched. So it's a two two punch process I guess to get the four holes and then bought these clips off of Amazon uh, pretty easy so this is one of the earlier revisions nice thing about it is um, how I have this set up is that I can just easily open up the one page I don't have to hold the book open that's nice here's one of the spelling errors I found uh, after I had it all done so I just circle with the red sharpie another one here something I wanted to omit there and make changes and then I make a revision and redo this and I bought the uh, laminate sheets off of Amazon, I think, for 500 sheets for 20 bucks or something. It was fairly inexpensive. And then I have a laminating machine. I just roll it through, and it heats it up and does it like that. So this works out really well. And, you know, normal checklist, easy to do. But I think what I'll do is figure out how I can make a link to my Word document and make it shareable for you. So I will try to put that down in the, um, the description below a uh, a link if for some reason i can't get that to work so i can make it so it's not a problem on my end uh in the comments if you would like a copy of the document in a word document form 
um, you can email me. So put it in the comments. I'd be happy to share it to you. As long as you understand that I'm not a professional and these are my own words and you have to take that for what it's worth just like anything else in experimental aviation. So um, make sure you do your research and understand exactly what uh, what you're doing before you put this in play. But I showed this to my DAR and he was completely happy with it for my inspection of the airplane. Actually was quite kind of impressed with uh, the whole document uh, as it sits. So look at this. I don't know if you guys can see that out there. That's what I get to look at. So that's my next year neighbor, Paul's Waco F2. He just got it. Uh, fully restored, beautiful airplane. Sit up in the office is what I get to look at. Uh, more importantly, Trisha gets to look at. And um, yeah, pretty cool place. So anyways, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys like this little video. Um, if you have any questions or any other suggestions, uh, let me know in the comments. All right, guys, thanks for visiting. If you uh, haven't already, click the subscribe button down below and click that bell icon so you make sure you get notifications of any new videos that come out. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.